There it is. Should still have my flip. And there we go. It has been almost seven years since Rocket League came out, and there are still new competitive mechanics being discovered. Like, that's just crazy to me. I don't know about you guys, but that's just crazy to me. Whenever a new mechanic gets discovered like this, I always like to make a video about it. Like, about five months ago, there was a mechanic called the Wall Dash that I made a video about. You guys have probably heard about it by now. Basically, a ton of pro players in the RLCS just suddenly out of nowhere started using it in their pro games. But the thing about that mechanic is that it was technically discovered, like, more than a year prior. So it wasn't technically new to the game. It was just the way it was being used was new. This mechanic we're talking about today, however, is like completely new. Like no one had ever done it ever until a couple weeks ago where it was first discovered. Like I really thought there were no more new competitive mechanics in this game. I was wrong. This new mechanic that was discovered just a couple weeks ago was done completely on accident by someone in free play. And now you've got people like all across the ranked ladder trying to learn it. This whole video, I'm going to be calling it the licks jump. Some people also call it the wall reset. I'm just calling it the licks jump because that's what Twitter decided on. So don't blame me if you don't like it. I didn't choose it. But it's called that because that first player to do it in free play on accident goes by the name Fedelix. He's a Japanese Rocket League player that was just messing around in free play. And he somehow managed to jump off in a way where he kept his dodge and he could use it whenever he wanted. Like it was totally on accident too. Even he didn't know how he did it at the time. It basically accomplishes the same thing as a normal flip reset that you get off the ball, except it doesn't have that vulnerable part where you're actually getting the reset. I'll show you guys how it's done later in the video. A lot of people actually think it's easier than a normal flip reset. So when Fedelix first posted this clip on Twitter, it immediately got a lot of traction, but I wouldn't say it totally blew up yet. He actually posted it on Christmas, December 25th, 2021, but it didn't fully blow up until a few weeks later. I personally did see this tweet around when it was posted, like around Christmas, but I didn't really think too much of it because there was no sign that it was actually repeatable yet because he was the only one to do it and he did it on accident. So I wasn't really going to freak out until I saw someone replicate it like multiple times in free play on purpose. And sure enough, someone did. The first person that I saw replicate it was Cinderblock. I'm sure a lot of you guys know him. And when I first saw this tweet, that's where I was like, okay, there might actually be something here. So I did some experimenting on my own just to see if I could do it myself. And after only about 10 minutes, I was able to do one. I didn't do it with the ball yet. Like it was just the motion of it, but that's the first step. So then I started trying it again with the ball this time. And 20 minutes later, I hit this clip. Like I actually hit a top corner clanger shot using the reset that I got from the wall. And this right here, I think was the beginning of where this mechanic truly blew up in the community as a whole. Obviously this clip is extremely sloppy. Like a few people pointed out that there's no way I would get back to the ball in time. Like in a real game scenario at a high level, I would totally get dusted before I reach it. But obviously that wasn't really the point of me posting it yet. The point was if I can do this in just 30 minutes as a grand champion player, imagine what a pro player could do in like 30 hours. So basically if you can optimize it enough to where that point of vulnerability is as small as possible, this could be huge. And yes, people ended up doing exactly that. They ended up fixing this exact issue. So to explain what happened next, we kind of need to go back in time because apparently as soon as Fedelix posted that clip on Christmas, there was a freestyler named Yamato in the Japanese Rocket League community that instantly started trying to get this thing consistent. And only five days after Fedelix posted that clip, so on December 30th, he uploaded an explanation, a tutorial, and his progression for learning the mechanic. Obviously not in competitive situations since he's a freestyler, but after just five days, he was able to learn it and use it multiple times in online my matches. And more importantly, he was able to do it in a way where his car was staying close to the ball the whole time. Like way better than mine where I was like getting caught on the wall and then trying to aerial back to it. So suddenly when this mechanic blew up in the English speaking community, Yamato's video where he explained how he does it ended up getting tossed around everywhere and a bunch of people were trying to learn it. The video itself is obviously in Japanese, but it does have English subtitles, so it's still useful. And this basically brings us to where we are today. With all this new information and hype around this mechanic, it just caused a giant chain reaction of people of all skill levels trying to learn it. You've got like plats, champs, SSLs, and especially pros trying to learn it as well. And the few pros that did start trying to learn it actually got it down pretty fast. Torment on version one ended up getting a pretty good one where he got like a musty flick all the way across the field. Uh, Alpha Kep ended up getting like a bunch of clips in just under an hour of practice, he said. Like the fact that all these pros are able to do this after just an hour of practice is already huge. Like when flip resets first started being used, I guarantee it took way more than an hour to learn how to do it. It was definitely like many hours of practice over the course of like days, weeks, or even months for some players. But these clips are hit by pros in literally under an hour. 
Okay, so I've hyped this mechanic up enough. I think you guys get the point for why I'm so excited about this. But there's still a couple things to address for why this mechanic might not actually become competitively useful. These issues obviously don't throw it completely out the window, but they're things that you should keep in mind. First thing is that the precise timing you need to have in order to pull this off is just incredibly specific. I'll show you how the mechanic is done shortly here and you'll see what I mean. It's a very small window for when you need to do these inputs in order for the mechanic to work properly. So in other words, even if you get it a couple times after just a little bit of practice and custom training, that doesn't mean you're necessarily close to getting it consistent. Another thing is that air dribble setups like these are not the most common thing in the world at the highest level of Rocket League. So when you do get the chance to set this up in a pro game, you'd be taking a pretty big risk to go for a licks jump, which has a high chance of messing up, when you could just do a completely normal air dribble setup, which is also very effective and there's almost no risk of you messing it up. And the last thing to keep in mind is that there actually is a point of vulnerability in all these setups I've shown so far. In all of these clips, as soon as they jump off the wall, their nose is pointing away from the ball, so even if they wanted to hit it right there, they couldn't. So if an opponent challenges right there, it's basically just a free dunk. So it's not necessarily taking the vulnerability out of the flip reset where you like drop it down and actually get the wheel touch. It's just moving that vulnerability spot to a different part in the process earlier on. Well, at least that's what I thought before I saw this clip. This right here is the best example I've been able to find so far. I asked the guy who hit this shot, Sig, to send me the replay file of it, and he kindly did. And you can see he does have that same point of vulnerability that everyone else has in their clips, but it's just so small that it might as well just not be there. His timing was so perfectly precise that it might as well have just been a normal air dribble jump, except he keeps his dodge available whenever he wants. Essentially proving that it is possible to have almost a completely normal air dribble setup, but you can use your dodge whenever you want. And that right there is why I think this mechanic does have potential to be used in RLCS. Like, you can't argue with a setup like that. Like, if that gets consistent, that will be used. The only thing in its way is the amount of time it would take to get something like that consistent. And right now, since this mechanic is still so new, we have no idea how long that is. In order to understand how this mechanic is done, you've got to understand a couple other things first. The first thing is a mechanic called the Curve Dash. This was first discovered by Halfway Dead or Rocket Science on YouTube a couple years ago. If you're not sure what it is, then I definitely recommend checking out this video. The gist of it is basically, you know how when you're driving down a half pipe and you try to jump while your car is on that half pipe? It basically just eats your jump, right? Like your jump essentially does nothing. It doesn't go anywhere. Well, if you time your jump just right to be so that your front wheels are on the flat ground, but your back wheels are still on the half pipe, then if you jump, your front wheels will lift up, but your back wheels will stay down on the ground. So now that your front wheels are in the air, you can basically just do a really convenient wave dash. I personally have been using the curve dash for a while in my games already, so I think that helped me learn the licks flip a little faster. Because that same principle of your front wheels popping up, but your back wheels staying down actually applies the same to when you're driving up a wall, not just down. And having your back wheels stick to the wall as you're driving up, but your front wheels hovering off is exactly what makes the licks jump possible. The second thing you need to know is actually how the gas button works when your wheels aren't on the ground. So a lot of you might not actually know this, but if you actually stand your car on its nose and then you just let it lean over over time, it'll just fall over pretty slowly. But on the contrary, if you just hold the gas button, your wheels will sort of snap to the ground really quickly. So basically, if you hold the gas button while your wheels aren't on the ground, your car will basically snap to whatever surface it's closest to. And you need to know that for the licks jump because after you drive up the wall, you need to be already holding gas so your car snaps back to the wall again. But just before your wheels do snap to the wall again, you need to do a side flip. When you do it correctly and it pops your car off the wall, it doesn't look like a side flip at all, but trust me, it is a side flip. If you're driving up the right wall, then you got a side flip to the left. If you're driving up the left wall, then you side flip to the right. So if you time that side flip to be just before your wheels would have landed on the wall again, then your car will actually pop off perfectly, hopefully in the direction of the ball, and you will of course retain your flip. The big indicator that tells you you did it right is if your car does a flip noise as it pops off the wall, but obviously it doesn't do the full flip motion. Altogether, the motion looks and sounds like this. So after just a couple hours of practice, I'm actually able to get a decent one every couple minutes or so. Obviously, it's not nearly often enough to pull it off in a real game, but it is pretty good for only a couple hours of practice. I think I just got it. Yeah, I just got it there after only a few tries. Like when I was first practicing flip resets, it took me like 10 hours before I was able to put one on net at all. So this mechanic is definitely a lot easier. I also heard that driving up the wall at like a specific angle makes it easier, but I personally haven't experienced that. Like I find it just as easy no matter what angle you're going off at. Like, look at that. Bang, just got it again. Something important to keep in mind is that since this mechanic is so new, there's, oh my God. 
Oh, almost scored it. I'm just gonna say, since this mechanic is so new, a lot of the information that's out right now may end up becoming just completely inaccurate like a couple months down the road, just because we don't have all the information about the mechanic yet. Like there could be just some special trick that we're not doing that we don't know about just because no one has gotten it consistent yet. So really only time will tell with this sort of thing for what's the best way to practice and learn a mechanic like this. Like I know it's possible right now to technically do it without holding gas after you do that first jump. So your wheels snap back to the wall slower. I think some people even find it easier that way, but the problem with that is since your wheels are snapping back slower, you're giving even more time for the ball to bounce away from you. So even if you do get it, you're just not going to be able to reach the ball in time to do anything good with it. There it is. Carry. Bang, let's go. I mean, I didn't really use my flip competitively there. There it is. That was a good one. And bang, there it is. So already, like, I've been recording this part for like three minutes. I've already gotten a couple decent ones where I got the motion down. And I've already scored two goals off of it. One of them was actually pretty good right there. I'll throw some other examples I've gotten with it on screen right now as well. If you guys have thoughts on this, feel free to let me know in the comments. I know I'm definitely going to keep practicing this just to see how good I can get it. Let's all be respectful though. Again, it's like impossible to know for sure whether this will be useful competitively or not. If some more crazy stuff happens with this mechanic, I'll be sure to make a video about it. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate you as always. Don't forget to hit the sub button if you're not already. It really does help me out and it's completely free. Other than that, I will see you guys next week.